My name's Chelsea Grimes, and first and foremost, I'm a big Liverpool fan. I've played for Liverpool from the age of nine all the way till I was 16, 17. And then I found a career in music, and that's what this city is about. It's football and music, and you know, I was lucky enough, and still am, to do both things that I love. Love or hate Liverpool, everyone had a soft spot for Jürgen. It was his charisma, he was charismatic. I think everywhere I go in the UK, everyone says, you know, we're not Liverpool fans, but we love Jürgen. I like Arna Slot. Listen, he might be better. Who knows? Let's just give him a chance. And I'm very excited. I get to meet him today. I'm going to grab me coffee. I hope he's not offended. I haven't made him one, but... <laughs> I think we're good, OK. Come on, let's go and see you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet I'm you. I'm Chelsea. Well. Anna. Anna, this was the first thing I was actually going to ask you. Yeah, how to Being pronounce. Being a Liverpool fan, I got told it was similar to John Arna Risa. Yeah, is it that, is true. Can yeah. we go with that? You can go with that, yeah. <laughs> OK, so there we go, people. First job done. So, as a Liverpool fan, I heard that you did watch Liverpool growing up quite a lot. Any favourite players, best memories growing up watching them? Back then there were only um, highlights from games on the Dutch television. But in recent years, of course, I watched a lot of Liverpool games because football fans, and I'm a football fan as well, we had the era where Pep Guardiola was at Barcelona and afterwards I think there was the era where Jürgen competed with Pep. And there were some really nice seasons and games uh, to watch. Yeah. Big, big games, yeah. And we're looking for some more this season from you. But, you know, being in Liverpool now, did you ever visit Liverpool before? Was this your first time when you moved here? How are you finding it? <laughs> it is the second time. Okay. I was here six, seven or eight years ago, I think. We were talking at the club where, where I was working at then to loan some players from Liverpool, which we not managed to do, but we visited one time and uh, we were two or three days into the city centre. I've got to ask, did you go to the Beatles Museum? Did you see anything no. around there? <laughs> we did see some, okay. uh, some uh, bars back then. Okay, bars. But I'm not sure if the Beatles Museum was one of them. We saw how people spend their Saturday evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been there a few times, visited some restaurants, but haven't seen that much yet. OK, well, I did spend a day with Virgil a few weeks ago, taken him by the Albert Dock, and I also took Andy Robertson to the Beatles Museum. So if you want a day out, I'm the girl, you OK? Are... It's my sightseeing, uh, yeah. so I'll okay. hold you to that. Any similarities to Rotterdam, where you was before, like...? I think there are a lot of similarities. Clubs come from the same background, I think. Both the docks are really important in, 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 in Rotterdam, as it is in uh, Liverpool. The fans are really, really behind the team. Passionate. Uh, passionate that's the word I was uh, trying to find. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it's the same with Liverpool, but, but they're a bit of the underdog. Yes. Final was always a bit of the underdog. It yeah. feels like we're always going into the big games, you know. I feel like we always say we do signings, right, as well. We don't spend a load of money. We try and do it real. We're real people, yeah. working class. Yeah. yeah. So uh, working class is something I think Rotterdam is uh, familiar with as well. So they're, they're both beautiful stadiums, always the, the fans are so loud. And if you go in Holland and US, which is the best stadium to play in, everybody will tell you it's the final stadium. And from what people have been told me here, the same answer you get if you ask it here in England, everybody will say, well, oh, the fans in Liverpool are the loudest. <laughs> How are you finding the accent? Are you understanding <laughs> it? Are you on it? <laughs> mm, there are one or two at this club where I have to listen really, really, really carefully to understand them. Is that them. Curtis Jones or Trent <laughs> by any chance? But Curtis is someone, he, he speaks really rapidly and has some accent as well, so sometimes you have to tell him, ask him, could you slow down slow a bit for down. me to understand you? Do you know any Scouse words so far? Just for, let's play a little game for like... I know one, though. Go on, uh, Sound. Sound? But well, that was the first one on the page. What yeah. does sound mean? Uh, that someone feels well or really good or... Uh, I'm sound. Yeah, yeah, I'm I love sound. that. Yeah, yeah. All right, what about a bevy? Beer, maybe? Well done, it's okay. a drink. Yeah, a... I'm going for a bevy. Oh, a bevy. Um, scran? Scran? Have you heard the boys say that yet? Oh, we're going for a scran. No, 
Yeah. OK, well, if you turn off one day to training and say, off, go on, boys, go, go for a scran, it means food. Ah, OK. That'll really okay. get them. And then something like nice webs. It means shoes, I think. There you yeah. go, yeah. yeah. You pointed like that. I did, I was giving song. you the heads up, you know what I mean? I was trying to help you out. <laughs> Back to football. For someone who doesn't know about your style of play, Liverpool fans, I think, when you got announced, we all went deep dive and tried to watch what you were going to bring to Liverpool. But can you tell us a little bit about what to expect throughout the season? We know you've talked about dominating games and being possession-led. So many managers will t give you the same answer. Everybody wants to have possession, everybody wants to press high. And that's also what I want. The, 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 it's not what you want, it's also what you have to show. And there are a lot of similarities with the style you can implement it over here. We both like to have the ball, we both like to be really intense without the ball. Jürgen likes to be really intense also with the ball, which I like at certain moments as well. But I also don't mind if you keep the ball, and maybe Jürgen didn't mind as well, but <laughs> <laughs> to keep the ball a bit longer. And from what I've seen from the boys in pre-season and also in training sessions, that they sometimes have to be a bit, a bit better aware of the risk reward. And that yeah. I mean, sometimes they take so much risk in a difficult ball for a ball that can only lead five meters up the pitch. And if you can put someone in front of the goalkeeper, take as much risk as you want. But they sometimes tend to over risk simple passes. So it's about changing maybe what they've been learning before. I, uh, I know... I'm, I'm not sure if they've learned it, but most of them are quite young. Okay. Uh, young players always want to go to goal, bam, 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 in every second of the game. Which is, like I said, something sometimes a good thing to do, but if you had to run a lot to get the ball back, which we want because we don't want to wait, we want to get the ball back as soon as we can, sometimes you have to run a lot. Then if you do get it back, you need some time to recover from that and, and, and those moments, keeping the ball is a bit better. But I guess that's just what we've seen before, you know, we roar no, and everything. We, we have to keep this yeah. uh, because I don't like to see a boring game, I'm a fan as well, so I like to I like to watch and see good football. That's what I just said about the Jurgen and uh, Pep era. So everybody wants to see football where something happens. So I'm not telling now that we only keep the ball f for no sake, for no use. But sometimes we uh, keeping the ball a bit longer would, can only help us. Morning. Obviously, first season here now. Everyone's asking you already. What are we to expect? Are you going for trophies? Of course. Yeah. But, you know, where, where are you feeling like will be a successful season for you in your first season at Liverpool? The most boring answer is if the boys and we as a staff give everything, every day, everything we got to achieve the highest possible. And uh, I think last season showed how small the margins are in the Premier League when Tottenham played City and Son went 1v1 to the goalkeeper. Wow, what a great save. Yeah, we would have scored it then. <laughs> Probably Arsenal would have won the league, yeah. and I think we have to try to go into a situation where we are either in the same game, and if Alisson saves it, we win it, or if we're not in the same game, if then Son scores it, yeah. that we then can win something. But that can only happen if we give every day everything we have, and we have to also understand that last two seasons we were quite far off yeah. from City and Arsenal, and uh, we are working every day really hard to close that gap again and to make sure we can compete, which Liverpool did for a long time last season, compete for the biggest trophies. Music to my ears. We are ready, but the only thing I haven't experienced is, of course, the Premier League yet, and people from England, and if you go to England, they always talk about intensity, yeah. intensity, intensity, intensity. Welcome home. We've seen good things, but there are also many, many, many things we still have and can improve, but which is normal, because some of them are only back for a week now and we didn't change the uh, playing style completely, but certain things are different, and then they have to adjust to that, but they also have to adjust to each other in this new, new, certain style of play. Well, on it, from every Liverpool fan, including myself, good luck <laughs> for the season. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.